So this week I'm going to be taking a look at my universal carrier or it's going to be a brand carrier for my British Airborne. Um, so I thought I'd bring you along from the beginning on this one and uh, we can do a bit of a box opening and have a quick look at it. And uh, then I press Ed and paint, uh, build it up and uh, paint it up. Right, let's start with removing the horrible cellophane. Now I've seen photos of uh, one particular one that was involved at Arnhem. So that's the one I'm going to have in mind and uh, probably use the pictures for the numbers um, with this one in mind. But let's uh, take a look inside. everything the instruction sheet looks fairly straightforward a little scorecard and its transfers Packed for you by Dragon. I've not come across that one before. Thanks, Dragon. There's the transfers. And card. Put that there in case you want to take a look. Although I do believe a lot of the I've heard people say uh, that on a lot of these cards the details are slightly out of date, but I I don't know. I've never I've never checked. I do keep these, but I've never looked never looked at them properly. Oops, in, oh, that's the back for that. A little destruction. Uh, token things. I've never actually made any of these up yet. I've always used something else but maybe I ought to. Alright, let's have a look what we've got inside. Oh, there's only two Bruise. Track detail. I don't think there's going to be much in the way of any spares left over. I think by the looks of it, it looks like they're pretty much all used. That's the one thing that I am going to think about is a. Uh, few more figures for me to paint there before I can uh, proceed much further. Just when I think I've, I've got somewhere with all my figures and then four more crop up. But hey ho, it's part of the job. It'll get there. The first thing really on this, I'm hoping the figures are not... I don't know. I mean, do they... Can they go in afterwards? I think we probably can, you know. I'll have a look at that and just make sure. Um, if they can, I'll leave the painting of the figures to the end. If if uh, something holds one of them in place and I can't finish a model, I'll have to do the painting of the figures first. But 
I'll just look at that and see what's best. But that's it. So that's that's the opening port. So obviously the next port I'm going to be looking at is pulling these together. So if you want to join me in a minute, I'll just get all my equipment ready. Uh, I've been taking a bit more of a look at this uh, before I do start preparing everything. And it's fairly clear that the front two at least um, do put go in place before the final outer casings put on and rather than risk it being a trouble to try and get them in there after it's built I am going to take the option to paint them now um, the other thing that's occurred to me uh, looking at these helmets they look more just British Army not airborne to me and uh, so what I'm going to do providing they they look okay scale wise is I've got out some of my leftover sprues from my British Airborne and I'm going to try and match the heads up with these figures just to make it look more in keeping with the rest of the army. So I'm going to clip these off and uh, then I'm going to find some appropriate heads for them and then see how we go from there. So I've taken off um, the first few sections for drawing number one and I'm going to start with the base and uh, just glue in the side panel in place. There we go. I'll do while I put the other piece in place. Oh, I'll just press ahead and uh, get a bit more of it done and I'll bring you back. Right. Now this next bit that I'm going to do is just something that I do. Um, not recommending it. It's a bit of a mad scientist in me if you like. What I do is I keep all of the metal clippings from metal models or metal vehicles. You know the bits that you cut off. The bits that the individual figures are attached to in some of the smaller sets and what I do is I use this to melt it down and then I normally pour it into little ingots to put in the bottom of my tanks so they've got a bit more weight um, there's not a lot of room in this universal carrier so I'm going to try a bit of an experiment there's a centerpiece that goes in and I've wrapped that in silver paper and I'm going to melt this down and then pour that into that to form a block. And then hopefully um, that will give it just a little bit more weight. Right, I'll back in a second. Right, so I've cast this little ingot. which I can fit into that gap there and that will give it a bit more weight when you're picking it up. Well, I'll just put this in place and I'll bring you back. So I've part built the actual model now and uh, I've also primed the figures because as I said I want to do the fig paint the figures up before I put them in and uh, I realized that I could build this up so far with the front out of place so I could um, get it primed now this is where I've made a mistake um, and it <laughs> Not just a mistake, a bit of an oversight really. I, I must have stopped thinking. I got carried away with making the model. And uh, I'll just explain it because it only really relates to the British Airborne. And it's fairly obvious, but like I say, I got carried away with making the model up. On the instructions, you've got two options. A Mark 1 carrier and a Mark 2 carrier. And... Uh, 
I knew it wasn't going to be the uh, Mark 1 that I needed. I knew it was going to be the Mark 2. Um, but what I'd overlooked uh, is the fact that there is actually a Mark 3 for just the Airborne. Um, for fairly obvious reasons, really. But obviously it made up such a pretty little model. <laughs> you know, with all its boxes on and everything, it really looked the part. So I just got carried away in putting them all, all these extras on, the side skirts and the uh, blanket boxes and the petrol cans and everything. It, and it looked good when I painted it up. And, uh, and then it came to me that, hang on a minute, British Airborne need to think about the weight for transporting it in the gliders. So I took another look at the uh, material that I've got on uh, the Airborne and sure enough I had to start stripping parts off after I'd painted it which is a bit disappointing but I'm glad I've done it. Um, so off came the uh, toolbox and the blanket, the side skirts, <laughs> the spare wheel, and various other little bits. The headlight, that don't go on. These stirrups, they don't go on. There's only one, now I've stripped it right down, there's only one thing that I can't really take off and that's the tool thing here that this plate was also taken off but it's an integral part of the model so I can live with that because it's it's ve barely noticeable the only thing that I have through that I've got some blemishes on the model itself where parts were glued on I'm not too worried about that because uh, a lot of it is gonna uh, be lost in the weathering and everything but I just thought I'd share it with you in case you're building for the uh, British Airborne as well. Just to save you that little hassle. <laughs> but uh, no, it looks a, e even with all the extras and everything stripped off it, it, it looks a decent enough model. The old gun's a bit, bit too proud there, it wants to be sagging down a bit, but we'll sort that out in a minute. Um... But yeah, so that's that's ready for its weathering. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop with that and I'm going to paint up the figures first. So uh, I'll get to work on that and then I'll bring you back when I've got the uh, figures done. With uh, so few men to paint in one go I'm having to have a little bits of waiting time so I thought I might start uh, painting up the model a little bit so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing the uh, road wheel edges in black It just um, when you, when you've got a few more figures to go, it's not such an issue, you know, in between drying times of the different colours. But with the just being the four, it makes sense to actually start work on this. If anybody's uh, interested in the paints I'm using, you might be aware that a lot of, a lot of mine just because it's what I started with or army painter paint. Um, I know some people are not mad keen on them because they, they can be quite thick and gloopy but once I've uh, put you know, a ball bearing or whatever in it. But once you've given it a shake it's, uh, it's okay. I mean you can put it on one of those uh, nail varnish shaker machines but to be honest I don't really tend to need to do that anymore. It uh, it's usually okay for me. You can use the medium or even water to thin it down a bit if that's what you need. So there's options. 
but I, I, I like the army paint to paints. I, I, I like the fact that you get fairly good coverage. I mean, I do use other paints. I've, <clears throat> I've got a variety of um, paints in my collection, but it tends to be, you know, I've seen something and I like that colour. It's not in my range, I'll go for it. So I've got a bit of an eclectic mix, really. Just do a few more of these. Obviously, I'll be um, painting up the tracks afterwards, so you know if I do catch the odd bit, it's not going to matter. There you go. You can see what I'm doing there. Hopefully. <laughs> right, I'll just go away and get the rest of this painted up, and then I can go back to the next layer on the uh, men. Well, I've painted up uh, the men, or bar there, their faces now, and their hands, and I'm going to use uh, the um, contrast, what's it called, Gilliman Flesh, for the face and hands. I've been using that on my, all my airborne. It, I'm quite quite pleased with it. I've never used it before, um, but it looks quite effective when it's on. So I'll show you that later. Um, just started putting the berries on the other two, but I've got to give it the black trim yet, and then that'll just be its face as well. Um, I've now touched up the tracks and what I've used on here as well is some Humbrol weathering powder and it's um what's the colour dark earth and I've used that to dusty up the wheels and onto the tracks as well after I'd painted them um Let's have a look. Necromancer cloak I used on the tracks and then I've dusted it up with this powder. I have started to give it a couple of washes but I'm going to stop now because I need to, before I go any further, I need to put my transfers on and get them in place. But I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint the skin on the four men, get them in position and... Uh, and then I can glue the uh, front plate into place. Then I'll put the transfers on. So that's what I'm going to be moving on to next. And then the other thing that I'm going to be applying is a little bit of the Humbrol rust as well powder. In just little places here and there around the wheels mainly around the gears and stuff. But it'll only be spots. But uh, I'll bring you back when I'm weathering it anyway. So I've got a little bit further with it now, as you can see. Um, I'm not normally a rivet counter. Um, in fact, I don't think I am a rivet counter. But something made me want this to be um, at least close to... An old picture that I found um, of a Bren carrier that relates to the parachute British parachute regiment themselves, um, and I'm sure most of you who are familiar with it will have seen this old photograph. Whether I can get it in closer, this one. You can just make out the numbers on the side. And uh, if you look really carefully, you can see the signs on the front as well, but you can't make out the number. But uh, through doing a bit of reading around, I've managed to find it. 
Now, on the numbers provided in the model, it, unsurprisingly, it didn't have that exact number. So, I've, <laughs> I've literally gone to the trouble of cutting down individual numbers from those transfers so I could rearrange them into the right order to make the right T number for it. Uh, don't ask me why I went to that much trouble, but I just liked that old photo and I thought, no, I'd, I'd like to have that number. So that's why I've done it. But uh, here's the finished thing. So you can see the number that I've made up on the side from individual numbers. And I've affixed the stars. And you can see the the number that relates to the parachute regiment on the front as well as their emblem and the same on the back. As I say, I wouldn't normally go to that trouble but I just couldn't resist it this time. I've looked at that photo so many times whilst, you know, reading up on the British Airborne that I thought, no, I'd like to have that in the game. So that's why I've done it. Well, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. But as you can see, the, the men are in place now. They're all painted up. Um, the only thing that remains to do is, obviously, I'm going to apply some wear on these uh, transfers now. And it's very similar to, if you look back at one of my tank um, videos, you'll see... I use a bit of sponge and uh, get some, uh, I think it's necromancer cloak that I use, but very dark grey. And I use that to tap to make any kind of scratch marks, wear marks on the unit. And obviously I'm going to be making them mainly up the top where they've clambered in. And then what I also do with a bit of sponge, again... You do it really dry, you dab it and dab it and dab it until almost all the paint's gone. And then gently dab over the transfers so it looks like the paint's scratched through and the original green showing underneath. And that'll be it. And then obviously I'm going to muddy it up a little bit as well. And then... Uh, then it'll be time to give it a matte varnish. But as you can see, it's nearly complete. I will just uh, do these effects on it now, do a bit of rusting, do a bit of uh, chipping on it, and then uh, I'll bring it back to tie the video up. So, I've put the finishing touches to it now, and... Uh, as I said, I've put the uh, the transfers on and I've uh, gone over those and speckled it up to make it look like there's some wear on the transfers. And then also applied some chipping to key places where you'd expect it to be. And you can probably make out that I've Give it a bit of splash of mud as well in certain places. And then the other thing that I've done um, that I didn't mention is I keyed a bit of uh, rust powder um, from the Humbrol range into some. Uh, dark wash and just put a little bit of that in and among the gears and wheels and the spring not much because they'd be maintaining it so you wouldn't expect to see a lot of rust but just a hint of it here and there and then a little light brushing of uh, gun metal as well on the guns I 
and before I applied this weathering I forgot to mention I do give it a hand painted thin layer of uh, the matte varnish over the transfers just to make sure that they're in place and there's no ghost in and that's it so what I'll do is I'll uh, just had add a few pictures for you to have a look at and I'll call that done another thing you can see in the photographs is that I've used uh, some spares from my British Airborne sprues and I've repositioned the back two men slightly and added a piat leaning over one's arm and the other one's holding onto a satchel and then his bag on the seat by the side of him um, I just thought it made it look a little bit different and again tied it in towards the British Airborne oh well what can I say about this last little picture basically uh, a little uh, rowing boat that I ordered from any scale models arrived while I was painting my figures so I thought oh, I'll check check it out for size well, that's it for this week. hope you enjoyed it and found something useful. If you have, please consider giving me a thumbs up or even subscribing for when the next video comes out. Thanks for joining me. Bye.